To thee we come, O Lord, our God. For your penance, for the next three nights, besides saying, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be, being in the Easter season, for each of the three nights to take one of the three readings, to not only read that reading, but also to spend a moment to reflect upon the importance of that reading. And now, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. And your Show us your mercy, Lord. And your Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, take away our sins from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I waited, waited for the Lord who bent down and heard my cry, drew me out of the pit of destruction, out of the mud of the swamp, set my feet upon rock, steadied my steps. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to who God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. 
we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you redeemed us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, granted that we may benefit from the graces merited by our Savior. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Jimmy, would you proclaim the word today? You have either to read from, or it's also the same thing. Yes. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communion of life, to the breaking of bread and to prayers. I came upon the and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to the numbers those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual. Too costly in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Alleluia. Lord, I am your servant, the child of your maid servant. You have loosened my bonds. Alleluia. A reading from the first letter of the St. Peter the Apostle. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith, to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that is perishable, even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him, not yet believe in him, you rejoice with an incredible and glorious joy as you attain the hold of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I praise you, Lord, for you have raised me up and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. Lord, you brought me up from Sheol. You kept me from going down to the pit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. On 
on the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called to Demas, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name words taken from today's Holy Gospel according to St. John. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles words taken from today's first reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today in the church is what we call Low Sunday. Throughout this past week, 
as daily Mass was offered, we spoke about the times in which Jesus appeared to not only his disciples, but also to his followers. You know what was very, very traumatic? The crucifixion of the Lord. They had abandoned Jesus. And now on that first Easter evening, following the resurrection, the Lord came and he said, Peace be with you. And John tells us that Jesus showed the place, the places where he was crucified. Now Thomas, we read, was not present. For whatever reason, he was not in the company. But even after the resurrection, even after the appearance to Mary and to the women, they still locked the do doors. They were afraid of what was going to happen to them if they could take their Lord and Master and crucify him to the wood of a cross, they fared no better. You know, in the beginning of the Gospel of John, Andrew, who is the younger brother of Simon Peter, he goes to his brother and says, we have found the Messiah. Well, there are different interpretations according to the Gospels. There's a story about where Jesus goes to see Simon Peter and tells him to put out his nets again. We have to understand that the Gospels were not all always written at the, were not written at the same time. Between 40 and 60 and 80 and 100, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John came forth and they, they wrote at that time to different groups of people. You know, even though most of the apostles of Jesus were illiterate, they still had that hope and that promise that the Messiah who was spoken about in the Old Testament, of whom they heard through oral tradition, had that hope and that promise of the one who was to come. Even after the resurrection of Jesus, when he appeared to the apostles and Thomas was not there, they must have been so happy and, and just unbelievably glad that everything that was spoken was fulfilled in that resurrection. But Thomas, being human, when they said, we have seen the Lord, I can imagine that Thomas under his breath probably said, yeah, okay. But Thomas said, unless I see for myself, I will not believe. Well, we hear the story that a week later, Jesus came and appeared, and Thomas was with them. And Jesus says, you want proof? This is the proof. And Thomas, in the end, said, my Lord and my God. My brothers and sisters, it's very hard to comprehend someone rising from the grave. Just as it was for Thomas, just as it was for the disciples. But Jesus comes to us this day with a simple message. Peace be with you. I wrote in this week's bulletin 
the, the miracle of having a small sect of people. And it started with 12. And how it expanded to 120 at the time of Pentecost, 40 days after his resurrection when Jesus ascended, and 10 days later, the Pentecost experience. My brothers and sisters, the fact remains that Christianity is the largest religion in the world amid all the skeptics, amid all the heretics, amid all those who are atheists, that in our world there is approximately 2.6 billion people who call themselves Christians. And the 2.6 billion people that claim and profess and are baptized all have a common denominator. And that is that they all believe without seeing that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And so, our Lord comes to each and every single one of us this day, and he says, peace be with you. You know, I read that the first letter of Peter, which was the second reading that we had today, wrote his first letter approximately A.D. 80. That was approximately 50 years after Jesus resurrected from the dead. Remember what Jesus said. Blessed are those who have not seen but yet believe. It is the cornerstone of our faith. With the reality, if you truly believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, what does Paul say? We will be saved from ignorance, from darkness, because the whole purpose of Jesus was to enlighten the world through not only his teachings and his healings, but most importantly, through the sacrifice he offered on the cross. And so Peter said to those who were the hearers of his first letter, as he speaks to us today, although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet you believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and a joyous joy, glorious joy, as you attain the goal of your faith. And what is the goal of your faith? What is the goal of my faith? The salvation of our souls that was offered to us through the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May this Easter season bring a greater depth of your faith, though you have not seen him, yet you love him and believe in him. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one on God, the Father God, maker of heaven and earth, of all I have seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, I will present my thank offerings to you. For you have delivered me from death and my foot from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. Alleluia. this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray, O Lord, our God, accept the offerings of your rejoicing church, which you have enlivened this day, and grant us the gift of perpetual gladness, for you have given us cause for great joy. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, 
Jesus Christ our Lord. Ah, especially at this time when he became our Paschal sacrifice, he is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death he conquered death for us, and by his wondrous resurrection he restored eternal life to us. Therefore, we he joined this day with the voices of angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our praise of glory, repeating very humbly. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you, the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the re remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept, accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily is in his entire being. He again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. <laughs> In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, and again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me.
Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the Son of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all the rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, Bless and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. For forever and ever. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. For forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May the commingling and the consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it. To everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, 
you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in us living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and the holy longing through this communion. Make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Receive the body.
my people. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, to you belong the keys of life and death by the will of the Father. Preserve us through these holy mysteries that our redemption may be assured and our doubts relieved. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sacrifice has been offered. Alleluia. 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 May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you. And may the grace of our risen Lord be with you now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and dwelt, made his dwelling among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. because of Christ's life within us. And that is why when we say the Word was made flesh, it is the incarnation of God who became man. So that is why we are asked to kneel at that most important, because that is the sum total of the incarnation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, Lord, will and let it Amen. And for the repose of the souls of Michael and Pauline of Chartic, as well as for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, <laughs> eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. Amen. May they all rest in peace. 
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.